This uh, Unreal tutorial video is going to show you how to block a character movement in an open world landscape based uh, uh, world. It's, um, in this instance, I'm going to use uh, the water plane so that uh, the character can't walk on the water plane. It's going to block. Uh, so I'm going to first demonstrate what the technique is so that you can see what the final product looks like. This is a, an MMO, and so there's a, there's a login and a server all behind this. Um, uh, but uh, this is the general idea. So there's an open world with uh, various players in it. This is on a test server, so I'm the only player. And you can see this is my first person character. I've reskinned it with uh, some asset pack assets, um, but uh, this could be any, any character. Um, and it is using the first person character. So immediately you can see they're, they're just doing some ray casting here. The general idea is that uh, it ray casts a vector in front of the character. Uh, and then it sees what volume is hit. Uh, I'm leaving all the debug on so that you can see the technique. Um, no matter which way I'm facing and no matter which way I'm moving, if I go in a diagonal or if I uh, go, go in a diagonal this way, it's always going to be in front of me. And whenever I hit the blocking volume, as soon as I hit that, uh, it's going to stop me. So I can't move into anywhere in that water plane. If I jump, uh, jump is suppressed. I can try to sneak around it and jump will be blocked uh, like that. I can try to jump into it. I can sort of barely step into it. Um, that's controllable. You can see this is about two meters uh, in front of me. You can control how tight you want to keep the circumference. Um, there is a little bit of a way around it. So if some of the areas are really small, you'll be able to walk into it like that little area there. Um, it, you know, it won't detect it because it's, it's too small. Um, and I might be able to like scoot a little bit into some of these areas, um, but I won't be able to to venture any further uh, uh, in there. So that's the idea. Um, also, uh, the height doesn't really matter. It's projecting down. I think I have it 100 meters here. You can adjust that however you want. But if say I want to try to like try to jump off the bridge, uh, so I can get up on the railing here, and then try to jump in, and it won't it won't let me. So the height really doesn't matter. There's some rocks over here as well. And we'll just try that real quick. So you can see if I try to jump off of these rocks, um, it won't uh, it won't let me do that. So I'll try to jump into the water. It's suppressing my jump. Um, if I try to run and jump, it'll stop me in midair. And there may be some areas where you'll get this kind of physics where it's trying to continually jump and re-jump. Uh, eventually it'll reset or the player won't be able, but you'll never be able to enter the, uh, the area where they're not supposed to go. So that's the technique. Um, let's take a look at the level. So the level is, uh, is a pretty standard landscape-based level. Um, there's uh, some asset pack assets in here again. Um, but the water plane is the thing that's that's key here. So this uh, there's first of all a landscape, and then there's a uh, a water plane that I've created. So we're going to take a look at that. And so the water plane is a uh, a blocking cube. There's a collision box here, and then there's a plane on top of it. And I've applied a a, a translucent texture to that. The plane is just slightly above the box. You can adjust that however you want, but um, that was the way that it worked best for me. Um, the box, so you want to make this so that it is uh, block all and character cannot step upon. And then the plane, uh, I made no collision. Um, you could also have collision, doesn't really matter, but um, I, I found that this, this works the best. So that's basically what your uh, blueprint looks like that creates the, the water. Then you apply that blueprint to your uh, to your your me uh, mesh. In this case, mine just encompasses the whole the whole thing. Um, so let's zoom back in. Um, so anywhere that this is is going to be blocked. Um, I have a, a character which is based uh, upon the uh, third person character as as the thing. I've got a segmented character, so there's a bunch of pieces, but that doesn't really matter. Um, it, it's all pretty much the standard kind of uh, kind of character. So the logic is in the um, in the movement piece. So 
the pieces that need to be modified are, let me just zoom this out a little bit. So in the input axis, where you're moving forward, moving right, which is also backwards and left, and with a negative, um, I've created this uh, probe water function, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, I've also optimized this a little bit. So they have it so that the uh, move forward and move right execute every time, every frame, no matter uh, if it's zero or not. I just added a, a check on the axis value to say if it's not zero so that you're not constantly ray casting because that's what this probe water is doing. Um, so you're going to just modify that to say uh, only do this stuff if the axis value uh, is not zero. If it's zero, you don't really care because the character's not moving in that direction. Um, then they uh, give you two things, a forward vector and a right vector. That's based on the rotation of the character. So you're just going to grab uh, those forward vector uh, nodes and plug them into the two probe water nodes that, I, that I've created here. And then the right vector, uh, same thing. And then these, uh, these forward vector nodes also uh, go into the movement inputs, uh, depending on just as they were wired up originally. So no big deal there. Um, and then also the forward scale and the right scale, those are just coming off of the uh, scale values of these, uh, these movement things. So basically the probe water just needs to know the uh, direction that the, the character's moving and between the vector and the scale, you can figure those things out. So let's dig into the probe water function. So probe water function is actually pretty simple. Um, what it's doing, this is, this is all calculating the initial vector. So it takes a forward vector and a forward scale. It takes a right vector and a right scale. Again, forward and back are the same, it's just negative. Right and left are the same, it's just negative. So um, I just take the sign of this, so it either returns one or minus one, because the scale is gonna be usually pretty, pretty small, 0 0.1 or something like that. Um, so you just wanna normalize that to be one or minus one. Same thing with the right. Uh, I'm multiplying that by the vector. So that gives me a unit length vector in the direction, in the forward direction, and in the left-right direction. So if I'm pressing W, it's going full forward. If I'm pressing D, it's going full right. If I'm pressing W and D, it's going to like a, a 45 degree angle off. Um, so that gives me my two vectors, the forward and back vector and the right and left vector. Um, in order to get the true vector of the direction that the player's facing, I just add those two vectors together. So you have your forward vector plus your right or left vector. Um, I'm then multiplying it by 200. So that projects my, uh, my, my um, tester out uh, two meters. You can tighten this up if you want to. I found that this is a good value to kind of stop the person before they are able to walk into the water because um, you're going to have a little bit of movement, deceleration time, and, and frame rate jitter, whatever else. You can make this, uh, depending on the character that you're using, however uh, long or short as you want to, but I found 200 works good for me. I'm using the capsule component as the starting point of where to project the vector from. Uh, again, if you have some other character that's got different extents, you could use a different thing. Um, but this is basically going to take the center of the character to use. So I get the location of the capsule component. I then add that to the direction vector, right? So this is this is two meters out in the direction of where the guy is trying to travel. I then uh, use that as the starting point into my line trace. Um, and then I trace down, in this case, it's 100 meters. So, uh, so I'm tracing from that starting point. I just subtract 100 meters from that, and that's my endpoint. I'm using visibility channel. You could create a custom channel if you wanted to, um, but that, but that uh, works well for me. Um, obviously, I have the debug turned on. You would turn this off uh, in, in a production environment. So um, once you get uh, a trace, I'm casting it to my water blueprint. And if the cast is good, I return true, meaning that when I cast that ray, the first thing I hit was water. Uh, and so that means that where I'm trying to go two meters in front of me, that's water. Um, and so that's what this is returning true for that. If the cast failed, it means I hit something else and then I return false. So that's really all there is to this node. Um, so then I'm using that to say, uh, if the guy is trying to move, right? If I'm pressing a w, uh, WASD and uh, the probe water returns true, right? Then don't move. Otherwise, uh, add the movement input. Now, there's a couple other things we need to do. One is suppress the jump, because jump 
is something that sort of lasts over time. <coughs> and so uh, again, what I did was called the probe water. So if I press jump and uh, I probe the water and I find it, um, I, and again, I'm using the uh, capsule component as my starting point. I'm getting my rotation of my actor. I'm getting a forward vector. So that's the direction I'm pointing. So that's the unit vector. And so that's the forward vector. What direction am I jumping in? Um, and so that's that's what that is. Uh, and then I just set the uh, forward scale to one and uh, the right vector to zero. I mean, because I can't jump sideways, so it always just jumps forward. So uh, so you don't care about the sideways. Um, so this then probes the water. If I don't hit the water, then I allow a jump. So that'll suppress the jump whenever I'm at the edge uh, of the water. Um, the other thing that I want to do, and this is sort of a fail safe because I found there was some areas where I could trick it, uh, is on tick, I'm going to take a look. Now, the first thing I do is because my game is multiplayer um, and I don't care about any of the AIs or NPCs or other players that are out there, um, I check, uh, is is this uh, character the, the player, the actual person who's being controlled? If it is, uh, then I continue on. If it's not, I really don't care because uh, I'm not going to worry about um, the, what other people are trying to do. This is only to suppress the player from moving onto the water. Um, so in that case, um, I'm going to say, uh, is the character moving? And I do that by grabbing the character movement component, looking at the velocity, getting the vector length of the velocity. If that's not zero, then I continue on. If So basically, this is saving having to do um, a, a line test every single frame or every single tick. Right, so if if uh, if I'm not moving, I really don't care. There's no issue with that. Uh, and then once again, I'm going to uh, take a look at my rotation, get the forward vector, uh, and then check if there's water in front of me. And if there is water in front of me, I'm going to stop the movement and I'm going to stop jumping. What I found was that I was able to, in some rare instances, run and jump and be able to get onto the water. Uh, a little bit farther on than I probably should have. So this will check on every single tick to see if you're moving, if you're going to be ending up on the water. And if it does, it just terminates the jump, it terminates your move, and you'll kind of float there for a moment and then move down. Um, and then once once you start, uh, once, once this movement stops, then this will stop. So there won't be any sort of loop there. You might end up, uh, if you didn't have that, you could end up with a loop where it's kind of jumping continuously. But um, but this prevents that because it stops all the movement, uh, it stops you jumping, and so then you're just going to kind of float back down to the ground. So, um, so that's it uh, in a nutshell. It gives you everything you need in order to implement a system that uh, is very efficient and um, stops any players from moving on to a water plane. All right, hope you enjoy it. Let me know any questions in the comments below.